Okay, hello everyone. We hoped you really enjoyed our holiday Bible club yesterday, and we're glad you're back for today. So today's armor piece are the sandals of the gospel of peace. But I think I've got something even cooler than sandals, because I don't wear sandals. I've got some really, really, really good trainers on, and if you can see them, I think you'll agree, because they're class, and I think they can make me run really, 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 really fast. Do you want to see? Just to show you how incredible my trainers are, they make me run really fast. So I'm going to do a full lap of the church, and we're going to see how long it takes me, okay? Count me down. Three, two, one, go. Was anyone timing that? Because I think that was pretty quick. Okay, so before we start today, let's say a quick prayer. So hands up, hands out, hands together. Lord, we thank you that Holiday Bible Club is still happening. I thank you for teaching us about the armour of God, and I pray that we can all learn to put it on in our lives every day. Amen. So let's start with our theme song today. Get up, do the actions, make sure you have plenty of space for Waymaker. Elijah then. And um, who was he and what was his story? So when you meet anybody, um, even today, or I am, um, I love history, so when I'm thinking about history, I always ask this question. You want to find out who they were and what their story was. Now, um, most people um, in their lifetime, when they look back over it, or even when you're still living it, have lots of major points, and you could maybe make it into a bit of a storyboard like this, um, almost like a highlight reel. Um, for Elijah, this would be definitely be the case because there are lots of really important and significant moments in the course of his life, um, as we will soon see. Now, um, I thought a good place for us to start in trying to answer that question, who was Elijah, is um, look at his name. Our first clue comes from his name. Now, um, as I already said, my name's Karis. So I would look up what my name actually means um, and a few others. So my name, Karis, means to love. And um, if you didn't know, all of our names actually have meanings. So this is something you can maybe do after. You can have a little Google and with your mum and dad and see what your name means. Um, another name, maybe some of you are called Sarah out there. So if you're called Sarah, um, your name actually means lady or princess, you'll be glad to know. 
Or um, maybe some of you are called Noah. Maybe we've heard about Noah in the Bible as well. Noah actually means rest, okay? But in the case of today, Elijah, Elijah's name means Yahweh is my God. Now, you might think, what on earth does Yahweh mean? Um, it's not really, again, a word that we would use every day. But um, perhaps um, you've maybe heard Johnny say it in church, and um, perhaps you've heard um, somebody else say it, maybe possibly in school. But um, basically, what Yahweh is, it's another name for God, and um, the God that Christians still worship today, the same God. Um, and this gives us the clue that actually, if, we, if Elijah is called Elijah and his name is Yahweh, is, means Yahweh is my God, it gives us a clue that actually Elijah himself might worship um, the, the same Christian God that we do today. All right, so keep that, bear that in mind then as we move forward. So the first thing we're going to do is watch a little video. Now, this video um, tells the story of Elijah, not all of it, but most of it. Um, I really want you to pay particular attention to the second half of the video um, and I want you to do that with two questions in mind. Now the first question is what um, name did King Ahab call Elijah? Now I know we don't know who King Ahab is yet but don't panic um, because that will all become clear. Um, so what name did King Ahab call Elijah? And then the second question is what did Elijah pour over his altar? And an altar is more or less um, a big fire that would have been more mostly um, outside where you would have burnt offerings um, at the time this was used to praise God. Okay, so those are your two questions. A little bit of a challenge for you as we watch this video. After Samuel, David and Solomon died, God's people were split into two kingdoms, Judah in the south and Israel in the north. The ruler of Israel was King Ahab, who did many things that God said were wrong. He worshipped idols and did more evil than any king before him. So God sent Elijah, the prophet, to teach Ahab a lesson. Ahab, God says there will be no rain for many years. This made Ahab very angry. Elijah had to run away from Ahab and camp near a brook. God sent birds to bring the prophet food. When the brook dried up, God told Elijah to go ask a certain woman for food. I only have enough left for one meal for me and my son. But Elijah said, Cook for me first, and you'll be all right. When she obeyed, God did a miracle. She didn't run out of food for three years. After those three years passed with no rain, God told Elijah to go meet King Ahab. There you are, you troublemaker. But it was really the king who caused the trouble. Let's see whose God is real. So the king's prophets built one altar to their god. And Elijah built an altar to his god. They put offerings on each of them. Then they prayed and waited to see whose god would answer their prayers by sending fire to burn up the sacrifice. The king's prophets screamed at their fake gods to send fire. No fire came. Elijah teased. Pray louder. Your God must be sleeping. They did. But nothing happened. When they stopped, Elijah had water poured over everything on the altar he'd built. Then he prayed to God in heaven to send fire. Fire came down. It burnt up the offering, the stones, and the water. Then the people knew that Elijah's God was the most powerful of all. That first question, what did King Ahab um, call Elijah? Did any of you get it? Hopefully, well, I just spoiled it if you um, didn't. But 
He called him a troublemaker. Now, troublemaker is not really a very nice name to be called. Um, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't really like to be called a troublemaker, especially not by a king. Um, but this was the circumstance that Elijah found himself in. Um, when Elijah went, had gone back to King Ahab to try and um, persuade him um, to worship um, the God that we know as Christians, um, again, his answer was still no. Elijah actually claimed that he wasn't a troublemaker and actually that the opposite was true, that King Ahab and his wife Jezebel were the ones causing the problems in Israel. And if it wasn't for all the false gods that they were worshipping and encouraging worship of, then Israel wouldn't have been in this state of drought and famine and that was the case and it was causing people to go hungry and thirsty. Now, this man here, um, Obadiah, he worked for King Ahab, but he too, just like Elijah, um, was a believer in the true, in the God, um, the same God that Elijah worshipped and the same God that I worship and we worship today. Obadiah told him, don't go, Elijah. Don't go to King Ahab because you're certain to die and in fact he might even kill me in the process. But yet, Elijah knew that God had told him to go. So he had a choice to make. He either didn't go and he disobeyed God or he did go and he kind of put his, suppose, put his life in the line. And um, So it was risky. But the next bit then, the second question I asked you was, what did Elijah have poured over his altar now? You can see a big water drop up there. He had water poured over his altar. Now, ex to be exact, he had four buckets poured over his altar three times, so much so that the water overflowed and it was, you know that point on the beach, maybe in Portship Strand and you're building a sand castle and you build a trench around your castle and the water goes into it. Well, that was kind of the case here. He put so much water on his altar, absolutely drenched it, and um, that the water went into the trench that was built around the altar. Um, and you would think, if there's so much water on this altar, then how could it possibly light on fire? Well, this is where the miracle and where God's power really comes into play. So Elijah, as you can see from the video, challenged the prophets, the other prophets of the other gods and um, the other false gods to come to this place called Mount Carmel. So just a mountain um, in Israel. Um, he said, come to Mount Carmel and if your God can light your um, altar on fire without you doing it yourself, then he must be the true God. But if your God can't, and my God can, then my God must be the true God. And um, so you can see what's happening here. It's kind of like a standoff or a showdown, you might say. And um, so there was 900 um, prophets, um, or false prophets, versus just one of Elijah. Okay, so now you think when you see 900 versus one, the 900 would win. But you have to remember that it isn't about the people on earth doing the praying necessarily in this context. It was the God that they were praying to because the God that Elijah was praying to was the one true God and still is the one true God. He said, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Okay, so after all of this, it was became obvious that Baal wasn't the real God. He couldn't light their altar on fire. But actually, even with this really soaking wet altar, um, the God that Elijah worshipped and the God that we worship could still um, make this altar become a blaze. Okay? And lots of people that day turned back to God and abandoned the false gods and idols that they'd been worshipping um, and realised um, how they needed to change their lives around. Now... In a lot of ways, that's a bit of a crazy story, and it is a bit of a crazy story, but you might be thinking, that's all very well, but Karis, we're doing the armour of God, and what has this got to do with the armour of God? Well, don't worry, I have another thing, a bit of investigation that I need us to do. So the question is, which piece of the armour of God are we looking at today? So hopefully you can maybe, might be able to guess um, from this video. Okay, so hopefully you guessed if you didn't, but it's something to do with our feet, okay? So the armour we're talking about today, and um, it reads like this in Ephesians 6 verse 16. Feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. Now, I actually forgot to bring my shoes, but I'm not, since we're all at home, 
I'm not wearing a shoe, but I actually would say this probably is my favourite shoe, my slipper. And um, so we're talking about what we do with our feet tonight. Oops, just get my slipper back on. And um, as we go through this now, when we see feet, we probably think out of action. Okay, your feet, you don't really use your feet when you're sitting down, you use your feet when you're moving. Okay, and we could see that um, through the story of Elijah, that Elijah was a man of action. He wasn't um, all about not doing anything. He was always prepared to get up and go where God was leading him. All right, and that comes to this next word, readiness. Um, if you're a Christian today, you should always be ready um, to tell others about the gospel and tell others about Jesus. And this was the same for um, Elijah. Elijah had to be ready to go where God had called him and to do the task that God had told him to do. Even when people like Obadiah um, warned him about the dangers of it, even when he thought he was alone, the last prophet, he still was ready to do um, God's work. And the last bit then here is the gospel of peace, okay? So the gospel of peace is something that all of us can access and um, hear about today. If you read your Bibles or if you, um, you've maybe heard it in prime time or you've heard it last night here at Holy Bible Club, um, but it's something not just for a few people, it's something for the whole world. How did Elijah do this then? How did Elijah, um, how does he fit this description of having feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace? Well, Elijah was prepared to do what frightened him. He was prepared to go, so his man of action, but he was, and he was ready to do it. He knew that God would protect him, and so he readied himself with the gospel of peace and confronted King Ahab. He was prepared to do what God asked him, and in doing so, um, God worked through him, and actually loads of people in that um, in Israel were saved. Loads of people turned away from the false gods they were worshiping and realized um, what they had been doing wrong. So that's really, I suppose, a practical way and an obvious way that this all this crazy story and um, to do with the altar was God's way of working through Elijah and um, to save that nation um, and bring them back to worship of the true God um, and the God that we still worship today. Okay, so I'm sorry if I've been talking for a long time, um, but I really want you to listen at this point because all of this is no good if we don't have anything um, for us to do ourselves. So I've got up here a wee question, what can we do? How can we um, have our feet fitted um, with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace? Well, there's lots of ways. I've only got four up here on the screen, um, but I'm sure you can think of more and you could talk to your parents or whoever's looking after you about this. But the first one I thought was you could be ready to go and talk to your friends about it. Now, at the minute that might be on the phone or maybe from a safe distance. Um, but there's always ways to talk to people around you about um, who God is and what he means for your life. The second thing you can do is ask questions. Um, even as adults, we always have questions um, about all, really everything in life, but you need to try and figure out for yourself um, who is Jesus in your life and um, how can he be um, your saviour and how can you ask to be forgiven of your sins and live a life for Jesus. So that's another way up here. The third one up here is read your Bible, okay? Although you can ask questions, a lot of the questions you have, you will find the answer to. In fact, all of them, you will find the answer to in the Bible. So that's a good thing to do. And then the fourth one that I have up here is just um, do what Elijah did. So Elijah was brave, he was courageous. He, Although he could have stayed away from King Ahab, who thought he was a troublemaker, he didn't. He did have God directed and went back to King Ahab and um, he didn't like him and he he challenged him and he challenged the false gods who the people of Israel were worshipping and through him God performed a miracle. He lit that altar that was soaking wet on fire and a lot of people in Israel came to know God. Okay, so hopefully that made things um, made some sense to you tonight and um, there's going to be lots of other activities so hopefully by the, if that doesn't make sense it will make more sense as you go through the rest of the night or the morning I should say um, but thanks for listening, goodbye Okay, it's time for our memory verse now and Colin is going to come and teach us today's and then after that Jocelyn is going to show us today's craft I think today's is going to be a tasty one Hello, today's memory verse is from Psalm 119, verse 105, 
and it says the following Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And now we've hidden a few words, but some clues. Your word. Um, we've even got it turned over to Psalm 119. Is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Okay, this time you set yourself. This time, just the objects. You have a go. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Can you remember what the verse is from the Bible now? Psalm verse well done. Last two goals. Okay, for the last time, let's see if you can do it without any clues. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Let's see if you got it right. Hello everyone, I've got the task today of showing you the craft for day two. You'll find a page um, online that will explain the craft to you. But Elijah obeyed God and he confronted evil. Elijah calls on God to consume the sacrifice. So I thought that we could do this by building our own altar. I've already started, I've found my plate and I've got the 12 stones that Elijah gathered together. Now the next part for my altar would be putting wood on it, making a fire for underneath. So I'm quickly taking my breadsticks and putting them on top. Maybe you could build them better than I can. Look, I even found some crisps and I was going to use those to pretend that they are wood. Remember what went on top of the altar? Yes, it was the sacrifice, so I found a little bit of ham in my fridge and I'm setting it on top. Can you see that? I'm building it really nicely. Now, just so that the fire wouldn't work, Elijah went even further and he decided to pour some water. Okay, these are blue-ish and my grapes are reddish, but these are to represent the water. And I made a whole channel right round the altar my blueberries and my grapes. I'm setting them on. Maybe you could make a nice pattern with them um, and make them make this much neater than I'm doing. I'm doing it very fast at the moment. Right, the next part was, oh, Elijah called on God to ask for fire to come down from heaven. And here's my fire pieces. There we go. I found some peppers. I thought those would look like flames of fire. And can you remember what happened? After all, we've got water here. Surely a fire wouldn't work. Maybe you could stack yours up a little bit better than me. But here are the flames coming down from heaven. And remember, the whole fire was cons the whole 
sacrifice on top was consumed by the fire. And there we go. And I thought maybe that you could do this. The next bit is to consume the fire. And you know what you could do? Is to eat it all up. Maybe I should pass this over to Stephen and he can eat it all up. So God answered Elijah's prayer and straight away on the whole altar and sacrifice was burnt up. And now it's time for you to eat the food and consume it. Thank you. Okay, we hope you've enjoyed today's programme. Before we go, I want to give you a challenge for today. And today's challenge is keep you ups. You can have a bronze prize if you can do five. You can have a silver prize if you can do 10. And you can have a gold prize if you can do 15. And that's the end of today's programme. Rachel is going to come and pray for us now. Thank you for joining us today. And remember to join us again at the same time tomorrow. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of Holiday Bible Club. And Lord, for the opportunity to learn more about you and about this amazing man, Elijah. We thank you that like Elijah, we have you to turn to if we feel unsure or frightened. We thank you that even through these times of uncertainty and fear, that you are with us. And like today's memory verse, you light the way for us that we need not fear. We know you have your arms around us and that you will protect us. Help us as we go through the rest of this week. Help us to learn and grow in your word and to open our minds and our hearts to know you. And Lord, we pray that someday we will all be back together as a church. Be with us, we pray. Amen.